Hey everybody, welcome back to a special edition of CAF's Heroes of Sport. My name is Bob Babbitt, co-founder of Challenge Athletes Foundation, and this is our road to Tokyo. Our next guest, two-time Paralympian, Mr. Eric Hightower. How you doing, Eric? Doing great, how are you? I am spectacular. So, when we look at Paralympics, and you went in 2008, mm -hmm. and you were 11th in the 400, 12th in the 100, and 13th in the 200, what was that first experience like? Because Beijing was one of our better Paralympics. Yes, um, I was definitely an eye opener. I was a younger athlete, yeah. so it was it was more of a learning experience for me to to get to know like what my future holds. Mm -hmm. You know, so what what do I need to work on for training so then the next games, you know, I can be ready to go. So mm -hmm. it was it was a fantastic experience. I loved every minute of it. Learned a lot. I bet. Um, and it made me the athlete I am today. Well, and, and being in that situation where you've got thousands and thousands of people in the stands. A lot of times the, the races we go to track meet and there's mm -hmm. mom and dad and you know yeah. a couple of people who live at the track. Mm -hmm. yep, <laughs> That's exactly. about it. Yep. And then all of a sudden you go there and it's like 85,000 mm -hmm. people in the stands. That, that must have been an eye opener. It was insane. Um, the very first race I did out on the track, I didn't even want to look up. Like I, when they took us out on the track, I just kept my eyes focused down on the track because I, so didn't, loud. I just didn't want to freak out right before my very first race. You know, so I was like, let me let me just not look. Let me get this race done, and then I'll probably settle down and, yeah. and have more fun with it. And so I did that first race, didn't even look at the crowd, and then um, got to the finish line. I looked up, and I'm like, oh, wow, there's a lot of people here. And then after that race, it was smooth sailing. Everything was fun and had, had a blast. So growing up, and growing up with spina bifida, uh, could, were there sports for you early on, or was that something that came later? There were. Um, my parents got me into wheelchair sports uh, when I was eight years old. Okay. Um, they heard about it through the Spina Bifida Association. So they literally took me out to try everything from basketball to sled hockey to tennis to track to, I mean, you name it. I've, I've tried them all. Yeah. And just for whatever reason, track's the one that stuck and been doing it ever since. So a lot of times guys go to track and then they go, okay, now I'm going to the roads because I want to do 5K, mm -hmm. 10K. I don't see a lot of that in your bio. So nope. you, you're like, you're a speed guy. I'm and definitely a sprinter. The shorter, the better. I, <laughs> I'm, I've done one marathon in my life and I didn't think I was going to survive, honestly. So that, that just assured me that, you know, you're definitely a sprinter, so just stay there. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like, there's some people who go, I will never do something where I need to carry a gel or mm -hmm. need to worry about a water bottle yep. or that crap. So yep. you, you don't ever... I don't want to do anything over a mile. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Mile seems ridiculous, it's doesn't that, it? Even an 800 is, is pushing it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So you were mentioning before we started chatting that they've added a new event yes. to the Paralympics, the four by one. Yep. Explain that because we see it in pair in triathlon. Mm -hmm. In triathlon, we have the mixed relay, which mm -hmm. is going to be the exci most exciting thing to happen in triathlon forever. Talk about the four by one because this is going to be amazing. Yep. So it's a mixed class relay. So um, there's four different classifications. So um, we don't hand off a baton. It's all through tagging. Right. So it'll start out with our VI athlete. Yes. They will tag our amputee athlete. Okay. Then the amputee athlete will tag our CP athlete then the CP athlete will tag the wheelchair athlete. Um, our team has done it twice. Uh, in 2019, it was the first time they've ever tried it. And in both races, we both got, we got gold in both of them. Um, trained for it about an hour before the race, never, never tried it before and went out there and did it. So we're, we're definitely all excited to go out and do it in Tokyo and, and see what happens. So to get to Tokyo, to get to your third uh, games, you need to go to Minneapolis. And yes. And at this point, what's your ranking and what do you need to, or does it matter at this point? Is just how you perform in Minneapolis? It's just how you perform. Um, I usually don't look at rankings because they okay. change so often. Right. Um, I just kind of focus on myself and yeah. the times I'm doing. I, I, you know, I, I try not to really care what the world's doing because at the end of the day, my goal is to beat everybody. Right. So um, with the postponement due to COVID, um, I think it actually has done me some good because it's just given me that much longer to train for it, to right. be ready for it. So um, I've done a few races already this year and I've done some of the fastest times I've ever done early in the season. So I'm super excited for uh, trials and I'm hoping I make that team. How have you changed from that first peril, from the athlete who made the first Paralympics in 08 mm -hmm. to the guy now who's racing in 2021? Uh, definitely with training. Um, that athlete in 2008 would only train once or twice a week. Yeah. The athlete now that I am, I'm training six days a week. Um, so I, it, I definitely learned from then that 
two days a week of training is just not going to cut it. If you, if you want to be one of the best athletes, athletes in the world and, you know, be at the top of the podium, you need to be dedicated every single day and, and be out there training every day. So And also complementing with strength, flexibility, yep. all that type of stuff as well. Yep. Um, got into the gym and everything, so... And, and high intensity work. Because a lot of times as people get older, they move up in distance because they lose that speed. Yeah. You seem to be a guy who's held on to his speed, I've, and that doesn't just happen. No, uh, I've been lucky to hold on to my speed because I am definitely a sprinter at heart. So yes. I, 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 I've played around with the longer distances just to try them because, you know, I mean, my thing is if you don't try it, how do you know if you don't like it? Sure. Anymore? So, you know, I, I've tried everything from the 100 to the, I, I've done the 5K before um, on the track, and I've, learned that sprinting is is for me so i keep it to the short sprints when you look back what do you look back at as is the the best race you've ever had uh you know i try to have every race be my best race mm -hmm. i don't so there's not necessarily a race that i guess stands out to me mm -hmm. too much because you know I, I every race i try to be the best athlete i can you know i, I set goals for myself to try to accomplish you know those during a race so sure. like you know like the next meet i'll be like you know my goal this meet is to be one of the first ones off the line off off the gun and, and you know so so you know all, all my races um there's been some sort of accomplishment that i've made in that race i try to i just try to you know yeah. be the best i can every single race so for this mixed relay could you end up racing with your wife on the team We'll have to see. They're just gonna they're gonna pick the fastest people out of those classifications. Okay. So honestly, like it could happen because you know because I did the mixed relay back in at World Championship 2019 doesn't guarantee that I will be on the relay team this sure. time around. Right. Th there could be another real racer that I don't know of that's faster than me that shows up and takes my spot. But so, at this point, are you, are you are you the fastest American guy right now? Um, or you don't in, know. I think so. Okay. Like I said, I don't really. You know. I, I'm pretty sure I am, but <laughs> but I I try not to say like, oh yeah, like right. I'm doing that. I I, I want to wait until the results come out. Of course. You know, I, I don't want to say like I'm going to be on that relay team yeah. and then they choose somebody else. Or, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So exactly. until until I see those results, I'm pretty confident that I'll be on that relay team. But until they actually announce it, yeah. you know, I, I try to stay humble. So we were just chatting with your beautiful wife, Kim, mm -hmm. and she was talking about that you guys are pretty competitive. Oh, yeah. At everything. Time. Everything. Groceries, uh, washing dishes, whatever mm -hmm. it happens to be. Yeah. Are, are you, do you dominate? Are you the, the, the fastest dishwasher in the um, house? You know, I got to let her win sometimes, you know. Because, uh, okay. Yeah. Because, you know, I'll, I get it. I, I want to. Yeah. I wanted it to last. I want to be competitive a lot, and if I keep winning, you know, then there's yeah. I think she'll, she'll get quit. bored of it and then quit. So it's you know, yeah. so don't don't tell her I said this, but you know, I would never are, know. There's no there are times where I'll you know we'll I'll, I'll let her win sometimes, but yeah. No, we we have so much fun with it in the grocery stores or whatever. You know, wherever we are, we just we're just messing around, having fun. So when you go to the Paralympics and she win it gets third gets a mm -hmm. bronze and you come home without a medal was that was that hard or is it one of those things where you knew you did as good as you could do i mean i i left it all on the line you yep. know I, I i know i left everything i had on that track and that was an accomplishment for me right obviously yes it would be nice because you know i, I heard for it from her a while, you know, how she has the medal and all this, you know, so I had to hear about that. Oh, that's like, competitive too. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, it doesn't matter what it is, we're always competitive. So, you know, I didn't let it get to me. I was super happy for her. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I knew I did the best I could and, and that's all I could do, so. Talk a little bit about your involvement with the adaptive uh, high school program, our track and field program, because yeah. both you and Kim have embraced it a thousand percent. Yep. And, Obviously, it's very important to you to pass it on to that next kid. Exactly. You know, I've I've enjoyed. I've been coaching for two or three years now, yeah. and it's it's the best thing ever. Knowing you know I'm coaching basically the next generation. Um, I am getting a little bit older, so I don't know how much longer I will personally be an athlete. Yes. So, I love passing down my knowledge and everything that I've learned as an athlete to pass down to these younger athletes, so they can be as accessible as I was when I was their age and growing up. So it's, it's awesome. It's the coolest thing. It's so cool. Kim says she's the Flash, and she mm -hmm. says, but, you know, um, Eric's Superman. Yep. Where'd that come from? 
Um, so when we first moved to the center, our group of friends that we had, um, we all just came up with our Your superhero, our names. superhero names. So we had the Flash. Um, one guy was Spider Man, um, like a uh, Superman. I mean, so it was just kind of a fun thing. And and um, the kids used to come to the training center for a field trip, and we'd talk to the kids and. The young kids just, you know, they love that kind of cartoon stuff and all that stuff. So they, they loved us when we came over in our in our Superman and Flash and everything. So it was fun. How tough has the COVID period been in terms of finding a place to train when, when everything was shut down? Because we talk about, you know, able-bodied guys go off a run, mm -hmm. go to the ocean, do that type of stuff. But if you're in a chair and so much of your life is athletics and you can't do your sport, yeah, it, get, it gets tough. It was definitely a challenge, especially in the beginning, trying to figure out how can I be that you know top athlete and train when everything is closed yeah. and I can't do that. So it, it was just figuring out what, what workouts can I do on the street that will kind of mimic being on mm. a track or, you know, weights were literally impossible to find so right. some athletes were buying like 10 pounds of rice from the store and using that as as training equipment. everything was sold just, out everything you couldn't was get sold weights. out yeah. yeah so so we'd have to just figure out what we could do so it was definitely kind of stressful but in a way it was kind of fun because you know just to play around like okay you know i'm motivated to get this workout done how am i going to do it you know and you knew everybody else you're competing against the same position yeah same thing nobody's so, nobody's got an advantage yeah so <laughs> so i knew it wasn't just me struggling everybody else was struggling and there's just you know when there's a will there's a way so i just figured out how can i keep training and figured it out what would it mean to you to go back to the paralympics oh i'm, I'm really hoping it would be the most amazing thing ever. I know I've been there twice already, but every experience is different. Um, I know this experience will probably be a little bit different than most because they're saying there's probably going to be no spectators right. or anything. But you know, I'm still going to go into that mindset, knowing you know this is this is the biggest race of my career. And you know, yes, there's not going to be a roar of the crowd, but that doesn't still mean I can't go fast and everything. So. So I'm assuming when you made the team in 2008 and then you weren't in the games in 2012, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that was pretty motivational for you getting back to 2016. Oh, definitely. Like that, I, I don't want to experience that again because that, right. that was tough to not hear your name Awful. be called. Yeah. And that's when I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to have to, I'm going to pack my things up, I'm going to move to the training center and I'm all I'm, in. I'm all in now. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm making 2016. <laughs> That's the toughest though, yes. right? Because in your head you're going, I should have done this, I should have yep. done that, I should have done all that. And you're like, okay, but now I can. Yep. Because you could yep. go, you could have gone the other way and go, well, I'm done. Yeah, exactly. And, and for a while there, I was done. I was like, you know what? I didn't make the team. It was pretty draining and everything. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm done. But I know deep down inside, you know, being the athlete I am, I'm like, you know what? I'm not done. I'm not going to let this small setback of not making this team. Yes you know, predict what I can do in the future. And that's, that's when I made the decision, like, you know, I'm, I'm moving away from home and I'm, I'm going out to the training center and I'm giving it all I got. And during that period, is that when you met Kim? That's when I met Kim, yep. So that was a great decision. It was the best decision. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you have two challenge athletes together with totally different disabilities, different mm -hmm. challenges, that, that could be pretty cool. I mean, obviously yep. in grocery stores, she yep. can get the stuff. Exactly. And she needs somebody to sort of tell her where to go. Exactly. Yep. All so you guys time. are good partners. And and people people compliment us all the time when they see us in the grocery store. Where I'm trying to like tell her, no, it's up here now. Move the get the right kicks. Left. They're up and that way. Everybody yeah, yeah. gets like a crack of it, like you guys work out so well because obviously I can't reach it, but she can't see it. So it's like, <laughs> so yeah, everybody everybody loves it. But yeah. And Kim was telling me that you worked at Dick's Sporting Goods in the shoe department. I did. Uh, I started working there a couple of years ago and. No idea where they're going to put me. I said, oh, you know, I'm pretty knowledgeable at sports. You can put yeah. me anywhere. And they're like, well, how about you work in the shoe department? I'm like, well, let's do this. You know, I, I don't really have feeling in my feet, so it's it's going to be kind of hard to tell people how shoes feel or whatever. But you know what? We made it work. And I love it. Honestly, it was probably one of the best jobs I've had. <laughs> you were one of those flexible type of guys who just loves everything. Yep. I love challenges. You know, some people, you know, they try to say, well, you know, most people are probably like, well, you can't work in the shoe department. You can't walk or anything, you know, and I, I don't let those things stop me. I just, you know, yeah, I, I can't feel how shoes feel or whatever, but, you know, I can still do research and then tell the customer, you know, this is how they feel. That, that's what I did. I, I overcame the challenge of, right. of 
you know, working in a shoe department when you can't feel your feet. Which so, is what you've done your entire life. My whole life, never let anything stop me. Love it. Eric, hey, best of luck in Tokyo, because I know it's gonna happen. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Eric well. Hightower has been a guest. Again, uh, this is a very special edition of CAF's Heroes of Sport. My name is Bob Babbitt, and this is our road to Tokyo.